Hi everybody, Dan Ullman here with the DRF Race of the Day for Tuesday, December the 27th. It's race number nine at Parks, the $75,000 Parks Juvenile. These are two-year-olds going seven-eighths of a mile. Let's take a peek at this field. Please scan the QR code for Race of the Day access on mobile. Your morning line favorite is the number seven recruiter and deservedly so. He started three times. He's been the favorite in all three of his races. He's won all three times for trainer Cal Lynch. He likes to be close to the pace and as we see from the Timeform US pace projector he should be up close in a red bar scenario which will indicate a fast pace. Winning time from the inside also unbeaten also a stakes winner. He's expected to make the lead from the rail. Recruiter will be breathing down his neck and the question is, are these, as they look on paper, the two horses to beat, or will they burn themselves out and set things up for an upsetter? We'll begin with winning time, watching his most recent race, the Pennsylvania Nursery. Uh, he was very game in this race. He broke from post position 11, and it's worth noting there was a lot of bumping and jostling to his inside, so winning time had a clear shot at getting up close to the pace in this race. That being said, the pace was very, very fast. Winning time fought every step of the way. He's getting tired at the end, as he should be after an enervating trip like this, and he still holds on to win by three quarters of a length. He won his debut by 11 on the lead. Breaking from the inside post, his hand is forced. He's going to have to go. He's facing open company for the first time after tacking Pennsylvania breads in his first two races, but winning time obviously has talent. Solid buyer speed figures. He'll be under the gun from the rail. The two is El Dicimi. This is a really interesting son of Cairo Prince, who was a winner three starts back in the race we're going to show you, a maiden special weight around two turns at Monmouth Park. And he got a very nice tactical trip as the odds on favorite to win, but he really looks good in the stretch, striding away from everyone else. Now, interestingly enough, since that race, they've tried him twice in turf routes, and he ran okay in one and not so great last time out during the Belmont at Aqueduct meet. He's back to dirt where he's run well twice. He's cutting back in distance in a race with pace. This is an interesting horse, and it's not like the horses he beat at Monmouth in that maiden race we showed you were that terrible. The third place finisher came back to earn a 66 buyer speed figure when second in a maiden special weight on dirt at Laurel. El Dicimi might get the right setup. He's likely going to be running from the back of the pack. The number three is Bick, and he was a debut winner at Penn National in this start going five and a half furlongs last month. He showed good early speed. He didn't have to go very fast. He was able to rate the pace on the lead, and he turns on the jets in the stretch. The fifth place finisher from this race did come back to win his next two starts. Buyer speed figures of 64 and 61. Bick is likely going to have to face a much tougher pace scenario as he steps up in class. John Dutton is the number four. We're going to watch John Dutton's maiden win. Second lifetime start going three quarters of a mile at Parks over a muddy track. And I like the fact that this horse overcame what looked to be a speed friendly track and did it from off of the pace. The fifth horse from this race would come back to hit the board in a state bred maiden special weight at Parks with a 60 buyer. John Dutton is going to have to face open company for the first time. He is a Pennsylvania bred, but he has the right running style, and it just looks like he's improving from start to start. He's a horse at 10 to 1 in the morning line that you can consider perhaps on the bottom of single race exotic wagers. The five is Daydreaming Boy, who was the uh, beaten favorite in the future stars last time out. He uh, faced a very uh, impressive horse that day. The winner of that race, How Great Is Nate, is now 4 for 4 lifetime. Daydreaming Boy, we're going to watch the stretch run of this race where he can't get to how great is Nate. But when you click on the short comment line in your free formulator past performances, you'll be able to access the head-on replay of this race. And Daydreaming Boy stumbled badly at the start. When I talked to trainer Lou Linder, he said that the rider, Michael Sanchez, just said after that, Daydreaming Boy picked up the bit and just went right after the leaders. Uh, the pace was solid. He got a little bit tired. That stumbling beginning did him no favors. Dexter Haddock aboard Daydreaming Boy on Tuesday. Linder says he wants to rate this horse off of the pace. He was a good winner. Two starts back with a 75 buyer. Chasing Stardom is the sixth. This horse a little bit tough to like. Made his career debut on a sloppy track in a maiden special weight. Didn't take much money. Didn't do much running. He's a horse that obviously has to improve. The sloppy track might have been an excuse, but still, he was a well-beaten maiden facing stakes winners in this stakes race. Recruiter is the seven, three for three in his career for 
Cal Lynch. Let's watch his last start, the $100,000 James F. Lewis III at Laurel. He sat a very good trip, prompting a long shot on the backstretch. He took over the lead under confident handling three-eighths of a mile from home, and he's very professional striding under the wire to earn an 84 buyer speed figure. He's now earned buyers of 79 or higher in all three lifetime starts, and those sort of numbers make him extremely tough in here. You have to like the fact he draws outside the other speed. He'll be close to the pace, but he won't be down inside facing that intense pressure. He'll be right there when the real racing begins. The number eight is We Don't Need Roads. We Don't Need Roads was cross-entered in the heft stakes scheduled for yesterday at Laurel, but pushed back to this Friday due to inclement weather. When I talked to his new trainer, Mark Salvaggio, he wanted to run at Laurel when it was scheduled on Monday. Now we'll see how it plans out that the race has been postponed a few days. We Don't Need Roads won his most recent start at Delaware going two turns. He got a perfect trip, a pocket journey. The rail opened up, he shot on through, and he was game to beat an odds on favorite. Since that race, he went through the auction ring. He was purchased for $100,000. I talked to Salvaggio, as I said, and he feels that this horse is going to improve around a distance of ground, that this is a starting off point for We Don't Need Roads, but a horse that does have some ability and grit. 90% Maddie is the number nine. Started his career on a three race win streak. That streak was snapped last time out in the Pennsylvania nursery when he was beaten by winning time. I talked to Butch Reed. He said, A, 90% Maddie just didn't seem like himself that day going into the race. And then he was down inside a position where he didn't feel 90% Maddie was at his most comfortable. He likes the way this horse is training coming into this race. And he really likes this outside post where he can stay in the clear and maybe away for some traffic. Wouldn't be surprised at all if Paco Lopez and 90% Maddie uh, improve on Tuesday. Hot Love completes the field. Second last time out in a starter optional claimer, so this is a pretty big step up in class. He did do a lot of work in that race, however, pushing a very solid pace going seven-eighths of a mile over a sloppy track before finishing second to a runaway winner. His buyer speed figures are just really light. They're going to have to improve greatly if he's going to contend in this race, and after eight lifetime starts, you could argue he has less upside than some of the other more fancied runners in this field. Before we get to my top selection, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video franchises. Top pick time for our Tuesday race of the day. I'm going to stick with Recruiter. He's three for three. I'm hoping he can make it four for four. I think it's a great attack outside post position. And this is just a very professional two-year-old. He seems like he's extremely mature, maybe more mature than some of the others in this race. We'll see if Recruiter can make it four for four. In the Tuesday race of the day, the Parks Juvenile, one of two $75,000 stakes races for two-year-olds at Parks Racing on Tuesday. Good luck.